Have you ever noticed how the market seems flooded with cameras of all different shapes and sizes? But if you want to find a super zoom or bridge camera, it's becoming harder and harder to find. Most of the super zooms out there have small cell phone size sensors, which means the quality ain't great. But for the photo enthusiast who's not looking for a toy, maybe to even use this camera in a professional or semi-professional capacity, there's really only a couple of choices of cameras that have one inch sensors. I wish I had those in my hand. Oh wait, I do. Introducing the Panasonic FZ2500 versus the Sony RX10 Mark IV. This is gonna be a full comparison video. First, we're gonna look at the physical differences between the cameras, the features, bells and whistles, what each camera brings to the table. And then we're gonna do an in-depth photo and video comparison. As a warning, this is a long video because there's gonna be a lot of not only side-by-side -side comparisons, but you'll also see each camera on their own out in the real world. And this hopefully will help you gauge which camera might be best for your needs. So each of these cameras has its own strengths and weaknesses in each department. Photo quality, video quality, you're gonna see the differences there. Image stabilization, autofocus, low light, sharpness, slow motion too. You're gonna to get a real sense of how these cameras compare and nowhere else on YouTube are you gonna see an in-depth comparison quite like this. So I need your full attention here. No distractions, turn off your cell phones. Unless you're watching this video on your cell phone, then you can leave it on. But this video is in 4K, so you can really see the difference in resolution. So no matter what you're watching on, turn it to the highest settings. If you're watching on a larger screen, that's even better. And this massive battle starts right now. So what's so special about a one inch sensor? Well, that's where we take a real leap in picture quality over the cell phone, giving you better dynamic range, low light and clarity. Now the sensor in your typical cell phone camera is about one over 2.3 inches, or in other words, about a half an inch. So you would think a one inch sensor is probably twice as good as that, right? Wrong, a one inch sensor captures four times as much light as a cell phone size sensor. Yes, that's pretty surprising, but should also translate into a nicer picture. How nice? Nice. Just nice? Pretty nice. The RX10 Mark IV was introduced in 2017 and the FC2500 in 2016, so these are not new cameras. Panasonic does have a model FC1000 Mark II in their line, another one in sensor camera with a shorter zoom. The FC2500 is the model to beat. Now, if you know my channel, I have a lot of reviews on the RX10 Mark IV. I don't want to rehash all the absolute specifics of it. This is a comparison video. So let me introduce you to the Panasonic FC2500 weighing in a little over two pounds or 966 grams. It's bundled with many features, but its standout feature is that 24 to 480 millimeter, 2.8 to 4.5 Leica lens, coupled with a 20 megapixel one inch CMOS sensor. The zoom is a little shorter than the Sony's and the aperture a little slower. Now the Sony weighs in at almost two and a half pounds or close to 1100 grams, which on paper is a little bit more than the Panasonic, but it feels like you definitely can feel the difference. The Sony is definitely heavier and more solid. And you'll also feel the difference in your pocketbook uh, the Sony weighing in considerably more than the Panasonic, the Sony rarely going on sale. But if you don't mind buying secondhand, you definitely can get a good deal on both these cameras as they have been around for a while. The Panasonic has the built-in neutral density filter, which the Sony doesn't have, very convenient for slow shutter photography and videography. And this is convenient because the Panasonic's minimum aperture is f11, compared to the Sony, which is F16, and that's a full stop difference. The Panasonic has a feature called 4K Photo, where you can capture a sequence of pictures in 4K resolution and pick the one you want. Sony lets you snap a picture while recording video, but you can't do it in 4K resolution, and that's kind of limiting. The Panasonic gives you more video profiles, plus 422 10-bit monitoring through HDMI. The FC2500 has focus stacking, albeit in a little bit reduced resolution. The Panasonic has a very nice 2.36 million dot EVF 
and a three inch fully articulating screen. Great to vlog with. The Sony has a very similar 2.35 million dot viewfinder. It has a tiltable LCD screen, 1.44 million dots, so a little higher resolution panel than the Panasonic. But the Sony is somewhat weather sealed, claiming it's resistant to dust and moisture. So if you happen to get caught in bad weather, well, you're better off having the RX10 Mark IV with you for safety than the Panasonic. So the RX10 Mark IV has a little bit of an edge in zoom range as the zoom goes out to 600 millimeters with its Carl Zeiss lens. The lens also has a dedicated aperture ring, which can be de-clicked for smooth adjustment for video. It also has a focus limiter switch. Now the RX10 Mark IV has a stack sensor, which should translate into faster overall processing for functions like faster autofocus, faster burst rates. And the Sony does in fact have a more modern autofocus system using the phase detect system as opposed to Panasonic's contrast-based, less precise autofocus system. First rate, 24 frames per second on the Sony, compared to 50 in electronic shutter, 12 in mechanical shutter on the Panasonic. Both have slow motion. We're going to compare the quality of the slow motion. Both have stabilization. They're very different. We're going to take a look at that too. Now, while the Sony does have a few touch focusing features, when it comes to touch, uh, the Panasonic has way more touch features on the camera. You can touch anywhere around the menu. And if you enable touch shutter, you could take a picture by touching on the screen. The Panasonic lens does not extend when zooming. It zooms internally. Now, the downside is when the camera is on, the lens is always at full extension. This protects the lens from dust, but it also makes it less discreet too. The Sony is compact at wide angle, then gets real big as you zoom. It's just so big. Both cameras have built-in pop-up flashes. Sony has a nice top LCD panel that lights up in the dark. Nice to be able to see your settings at a glance. The Sony 72 millimeter lens comes with a supplied pedal type design, reversible lens shade. The Panasonic slightly smaller 67 millimeter front lens comes with a more aggressive looking lens hood, but it's also reversible. Both cameras have mic and headphone jacks and both cameras can shoot in RAW and JPEG. For video, the Sony has a 30 minute pesky recording limit, but the Panasonic does not. The FC2500 has a time-lapse mode and a multiple exposure mode, which I tested to see if it works, and it does actually. With most cameras, when you set a limit to the ISO, you can also set a minimum shutter speed. Well, you can't do that with the FC2500, and that's frustrating for street photography, wildlife, or anything with fast-moving subjects. If you're intrigued so far, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help the channel. The best is yet to come. Okay, for this first test, we're gonna take a look at both cameras at their full zoom, so you can get an idea of the difference between 600 millimeters, here it is with the Sony, versus 480 with the Panasonic FC2500, how the perspective is, and is this a very significant difference for you, for your needs? Here you can see them side by side. Now the cameras were set to program auto mode. Here they are in wide angle. They both have a 24 millimeter wide angle, but due to the exposure differences, you definitely can see a difference. A little more detail in the water in the Sony. I wanna show you the crop you'll expect in video mode when you shoot with both cameras. Here with the Sony, this is at full zoom in photo mode. When you go into shooting 4K video, you'll notice that the image does crop in a bit. You get in tighter. So that might be an advantage for doing zoom work. Here with the FC2500, this is full zoom in photo, and wow, it actually crops in more than the Sony does. So with the Panasonic in video mode, you're gonna notice in a second when I show you side by side, that now the difference in the zooms is almost completely negated because of the extra crop that the Panasonic gives you in video mode. Here's the Sony at 600 millimeters. You see, you can hardly see a difference at all. I also want you to look at the stabilization. The Panasonic seems to do a better job of keeping the image stable. Now you can also shoot in HD video, which changes the stabilization algorithm a little bit. Here is 4K30 as a reference again. It's kind of jittery at full zoom. In XAVC HD, still looks the same to me. It's still kind of jittery. Here is AVC HD mode. 
it crops in even further, but you notice it looks floatier and you don't have as many jitters. So the stabilization is best in this mode. Now for the next section, I'm not gonna tell you right now which camera is which. I just want you to get a sense of these images and see what you think. This is all coming from one camera. I set it to programmed auto mode. So the cameras just do what they think is best based on the lighting conditions of the day. This is all from the same camera right now. You can get a sense of the image quality, the sharpness, how everything looks. And I'm gonna change cameras in a second. And this is camera number two. And again, you can see what you think of it taken at the exact same time. Certainly there is a noticeable difference right off the bat. Okay, so the cat's out of the bag. These images here, the second set was the Panasonic 2500 and you're still looking at those images. As we crop into the image, I noticed with the Panasonic that it's just really not as crisp as the Sony looks. So here we'll crop in on a very similar image with the RX10 Mark IV. And if you can just notice that it just looks a little sharper, it keeps the detail as we pixel peep and crop in. But even without pixel peeping, just looking at these images on their own, I mean, they're fine capturing these birds in flight, but it looks, looks like a little bit of a blurring or just not as crisp, a little bit of like overexposed on the birds, whereas the Sony is exposed better, just better contrast, better sharpness, just more presence to these Sony images. Two birds are better than one. Anybody know what, is that a stork? That looks like storks. Storks are what was supposed to deliver the babies. That's what my mother always told me, that I was delivered by a stork. And um, whenever I saw a stork, I wanted to know if that was potentially my father. The RX-10 gets us in a little tighter. To me, the Panasonic's video performance is better than its photo performance. And you can see it's much closer to the Sony in video than it is in photos. Now, both cameras have their version of extended zooms. Sony calls their extended zoom clear image zoom, and Panasonic calls theirs intelligent zoom. Both claim that these extended zooms do almost as good a job as optical zoom. So let's take a look. Full optical. And this is full clear image zoom in video. This is the full optical range. And this is the full intelligent zoom range. I'm not sure if you can pick this up from YouTube, but I noticed a bit of a grainy effect or some video noise, especially like in the dark areas around the goose's neck area and the black fur, just something that doesn't look right. But at full optical zoom without any intelligent zoom on the 2500, that effect goes away and everything looks pretty good here. I think it looks sharp. Colors look good, uh, contrast looks good, this, this looks good. And here is the RX10 Mark IV at its full optical zoom. This is the clear image zoom, still looks nice and crisp. Here is the Panasonic's intelligent zoom, not quite as crisp. If we crop in, see a bit of a breakdown in the image. Let's do the same thing with the Sony. Let's crop in and it seems to hold together better. One final example here is the Panasonic FC2500. This looks very good, and this is also intelligent zoom. You can see how close we can get. Now into the optical range. And here are just a few shots I took with each camera of some birds flying. You can get an idea of the difference in the renditions of the photos. Now I'm going to show you a few shots taken with each camera from approximately the same angle. A few of the nicer shots from each camera on the day so you can compare. Now here's a few more shots from a little bit of a different angle. The sun's gonna be in a different position. So again, the cameras are at program auto. I really like these shots here with the FC2500. It looks like the geese are trying to communicate or something. Well, either that or they're, they're gagging. Looks like this shot missed focused a bit. 
I do like this shot here, this twosome at full zoom. And here we have a threesome. Also looks nice and clear with the FC2500. I like the look of this image as well. But this one looks a little overexposed, a little flary. These were the settings I put on screen here. It's at full zoom. Notice the Panasonic exposes a bit hot, meaning the exposure is a little too bright at times. I noticed this in the viewfinder, so I lowered the exposure in the Panasonic down to minus 0.7. And you'll notice it looks a lot richer now, actually closer to the Sony. So I'm glad I did this. I like this shot right here with the water droplets coming right from its beak. These next couple of shots were kind of disappointing. It looks like either the focus was missed or the shutter speed wasn't fast enough because there's motion blur, but the shutter speed is fast, so I'm not sure what happened. Sony also occasionally missed focus too, but when you compare the images, here we have a twosome with the Sony and a, I guess a fivesome. Looks nice and clear and just very sharp. Exposure seems right. I didn't have to manually adjust any exposure. Really good detail. What exactly is in his mouth? I don't know. What exactly are you eating? So let's switch gears and move to low light. We've seen everything in nice bright conditions. Now let's see how these cameras do when they're stressed a little bit in low light conditions. So I have the cameras side by side. Now, the Sony has a bit of an advantage with its aperture at f2.4. Here's a very dark scene with the Sony, and here it is with the Panasonic. And you can see they're fairly close side by side, a little brighter with the Sony, that, which makes sense due to the small difference in aperture. Now these shots were at wide angle. When you zoom in, there's also an aperture difference as well. Here at f4, the shutter speed is at 1 50th on the Sony. The Panasonic has to go to 1 8th because of the slower aperture. This was a little blurry. I retook it and it became sharper. I will tell you that the red color of that box is reproduced more accurately on the Sony. It's closer to the fire engine red. But in an outside real world example of low light, here is the Sony. It looks a very pretty image. Actually, I think the Panasonic exposes a little bit better here. You can see the houses in the foreground. And one more night scene with the Sony zoomed in. You can see this is a very clear image all considering, and the Panasonic a bit darker, which makes sense due to the slower aperture. So now I'm gonna show you some images taken with each camera out in the real world. Let's start with the Panasonic 2500. We'll start with the birth sequence that I took of this dog. Each split second, a dog has a slightly different expression. So this gives you the ability to pick the best picture from the sequence. And this one was my favorite. It almost looks like he's smiling for the camera saying, cheese. I'd call it a good shot, not a great shot. It's not overly sharp, but everything looks relatively good. I'm not crying, just like this baby isn't on this shot. It's decent. This shot looks nice and sharp here. And this is all the 2500 again. As you crop in, you can even see the name of the airliner. And in this shot, we got a little bonus. You can see that little dragonfly it looks like out of focus. So two birds. And here are two lovebirds. Well, when you walk around the streets of New York City, you can see anything just about, including this wedding shoot. I decided to use this as an opportunity. Now watch how we go from photo to video. You can see the freckles in her skin. It just looks sharper and better. That is when it's in focus. As I mentioned, it takes a while for the 2500 to gain focus, but when it's in focus, I really like the image. Sometimes softly pressing the shutter button will help the focus kick in like I did right here. The details in her skin, the freckles, are showing much better in the video shot than it did in the photos. The clarity seems better for some reason in video, and this is what people on the internet are saying about this camera. People do say that the FC2500 is a better video camera than photo camera, and I think these examples possibly are confirming that. Let's get back to some photos. Here's a nice shot with contrast and colors, a white rose. Now the camera's macro ability enabled me to take some shots of a lantern fly. You know, these weird looking insects that are overtaking the city. This is actually the first time I actually noticed one. Both the Sony and the Panasonic have the ability to get up close, which I really like about carrying one lens for zoom work and for close up work. They are creepy looking. I guess those red eyes do it. Getting back to our FC2500 photos, this is okay. 
This is better though. I like finding irony in pictures. You see all the mannequins dressed in black and this woman is just standing there as she could be part of the window. I like the composition here. You notice the runner navigating the New York City traffic, trying not to get hit. To make this shot a little interesting, I try to time it so this woman with a similar colored shirt to the flowers was in the background. Do you see the matching colors here? How's the FC 2500 doing? Actually, you're on camera, so the joke's on you. Not everybody has a super zoom, so they have to use their cell phones, and you see examples everywhere. I like this shot, how the light is capturing this guy's shirt, but the focus is just not great. Not sure what was going on here. Was I busted here in this shot? Yeah, I was busted. Here's a white bike, and here's a black bike. And speaking of white, I think this was actually my shot of the day. These four guys in the front, I think, all were working together. But the guy sitting on the stoop, I don't think he was, but he has a white shirt. Notice the white car right behind him, the white pole, the sort of white colored concrete. This all came together and made me happy, but not as happy as this couple who seemingly are in love as evidenced by their hand-holding. Always pay attention to details in photography. How much is that lady in the window? What lady, you ask? Right there. You could barely see her without being zoomed in with the FC 2500. Now, I notice an opportunity to frame this billboard in an interesting way. You see the smoke coming out of the street. So I moved over and framed the shot so the smoke appears to be coming from... Uh, well, you get the idea. I like the background blur here, but I was aiming for the dog. It looks like it missed the focus on the dog and got the woman's face instead. You'll notice there's no background blur here because the mailboxes are very close to the wall, not much separation. Here I used the built-in neutral density filters in the FC2500 to get that motion effect where the cars are in motion but everything else is stationary. Now, does this guy realize that the tag is still on his hat or do you think he's making some type of fashion statement? I was disappointed when I saw these images back because it looks like the images are not in focus. The shutter speed is at 1 1 25th. Maybe it should have been faster. I'm just not sure what was going on here. This maybe is the best shot at 1 3 20th. Which is why when I do street photography, I set a minimum shutter speed to avoid this problem, but you can't in the FC 2500. I really want to give the Panasonic a fair shot. If some of these images didn't look quite right because the shutter speed was just too slow for some reason, not sure why, the camera was set to program auto, so it should be smart enough to know the right shutter speed. But I'm going to use shutter priority now before we look at the RX10 photos and try it again. I went out the next day with similar weather conditions, fortunately. So let's see if the pictures look a little clearer and less blurring with the shutter speed set faster. I set the shutter speed to 1 640th of a second. That combined with the image stabilization really should ensure that the images are crisp. I took this first shot mainly because of the sign, Axe the Tax. I thought that was ironic for a barber shop. But then I looked at it, look at all these reflections. You don't know who's in the shop and who's outside the shop. Okay, so this is at uh, 1 over 640th of a second. There's motion here cropping in. The kid definitely looks sharp. I'm not seeing any blurring issues. I like this wide angle shot as the trees frame the taxi cab at the end of the block. So the faster shutter speed is kicking up the ISO here at 3200. You see a little grain. I like this shot besides the mom's head being cut off. ISO is only 800 here, but it still looks a little grainy and a little soft even. I think at the telephoto end, the lens softens up. Not a telephoto shot here, and that looks much sharper, like this image, also like the detail and sharpness in this image as well. Now, this is not an interesting shot by any means, but I'm only showing it to you because I saw this same woman when I went out later with the RX10 Mark IV with the orange pants, so you'll be able to compare. I like shots with silhouettes, but I think in this particular instance, the camera back focused, it didn't focus on the subject. You can even see that sign where it says 250 is, is completely out of focus. No sharpness issue here at all. The pines and the needles are nice and sharp. So I think using shutter priority did help in not having as many blurry shots. So keep that in mind when using this camera. You may want to use shutter priority if you're shooting in fast action. Okay, let's go out now with the RX10 Mark IV and see how that does on its own. And just to show you that the RX10 also misses, 
This didn't get the focus either on this. A lot of fast action. It's tough on a camera. This shot was in focus and looks good. I like the contrast here with the yellow and black. I really like this shot. This might be my favorite with the RX-10 for the day. Looks like I hit the shutter button right at the moment just to capture the intensity of the conversation that was going on here. Now, remember the woman with the orange pants from before? This is the RX-10 version and this is the Panasonic 2500 version. I think the Sony's colors are just a bit brighter. Orange, you glad I showed you this? <laughs> so if I titled this photo White Privilege, would you guys hate me or laugh at me? Hate you. Again, we're looking at the RX-10 Mark IV. Love the subject isolation here. Like how it renders the colors of this image. Now, if we put the camera in aperture priority and go to F16, we should get some nice sun stars. This picture is capable of giving anyone an appetite, or not. Colors really popping here as well. I really like to find irony in photos, and I love this one where it says, find your lifelong soulmates. They look like they probably are soulmates, and they're wearing jeans, just like the sign says. And again, these sets of images were all taken with the RX-10 Mark IV. I don't want to influence you, but it just seems that they have more presence, more pop, more sharpness, more contrast than the 2500. In this image here, you can zoom all the way into this guy's glasses and see a nice reflection. Does that sound yummy? Not sure, but at least it's real snow milk. Give me a hand, will ya? More than one would be better. I really like the eye contact here and the strong shadow. I was really pleased with these bird shots taken with the RX-10 Mark IV, freezing the action, no shutter speed issues. Sony exposed for the sky here, so it's way too dark, but it gives sort of like an Alfred Hitchcock foreboding look. Like the FC2500, you could take nice close-up shots with a near macro capability of the very versatile lens on the RX-10 Mark IV. From near to far, these kids were way off in the distance and you really can get to see their expression. So a couple of contenders for my favorite burst shot. This one, the curls of the smoke sort of go with the curls of her hair. But this one looks like she's just wearing a mask of smoke. So that's the winner. Now I'm showing you this so you can concentrate on the autofocus. Remember the FC2500 struggles with the bride and groom scene looking to find focus. Here there's a lot of opportunities for the Sony to focus on other things, but it keeps the focus on this guy's face and I think does a much better job. Now I just want to show you one extra feature of the FC2500. If you really want to go in more than 480 millimeters and you don't want to crop later, by Choosing a file size less than large, medium or small, you see where it says EX in the menu there? That means extended zoom. So you can actually zoom in more than the 480, but it's doing a digital crop in camera. So let me give you some examples of what this looks like. So this is a large file taken at full zoom 480. Now this medium file, you can go up to 675, and when you set it to small, you can go to 960. So let's see how this trick compares that if you shot in large at 480 and wanted to crop in to around 960, how it would compare. So this is cropped into 960 from a large file, and this shot is the actual small file at 960. I think it looks better if you crop in on your own, so I wouldn't recommend using this. Let me just show you now the slow motion differences. In the Panasonic, it's called variable frame rate and you can set various speeds. And in the Sony, you have to turn the dial to HFR called high frame rate. Here is slow motion in the Sony. You are limited to only a few seconds of recording a slow motion sequence and you have to wait for it to render in the camera, which is a little annoying. Now here's the Panasonic at 50% slow motion. I noticed the quality seems a bit less than the Sony little more degraded quality. And I'm gonna show you 25% slow motion. Again, the motion is smooth, just the quality leaves something to be desired. Again, the Sony just looks sharper and crisper here. An alternate, and I think a better way, which you can only do on the Sony, is to shoot in HD and go to 120 frames per second. And then in your editing software, 
slow down the speed to 50%, and I think you will get a better result. But again, you can't shoot this way on the Panasonic. That's only available on the Sony. The FC2500 offers you Cinelike D and Cinelike V for those that like grading their videos. You can also shoot in 4K DCI, which is a nice addition, a little higher resolution than standard 4K. So looks like Panasonic really paid attention to the video features of this camera over the photo features. And I really think that answers the question of who the 2500 is really geared at. I think Panasonic really decided to go for the video shooters with this camera. Number one, because the video quality seems to be better relative to its own photo quality. The flippy screen, that 4K DCI, the no record limit, the HDMI out, which produces a four to two to two signal, the ND filters, which are very handy for video to keep the shutter speed at 1 60th of a second. So is the video quality of the Panasonic better than the RX10 Mark IV? Well, it's a lot closer than the photo quality is, that's for sure. But the RX10 still has an advantage in terms of autofocus. So if you're an autofocus shooter, keep that in mind. If you use manual focus, well, then you may be more geared towards the 2500, especially with all the video features. When it comes to photo quality, however, I think hands down that the RX10 Mark IV just produces a punchier, more pleasing, sharper image. The lens on this camera may not be the sharpest and it's just not really geared for photo quality as much. So if you're a photographer, especially with the tilting screen, I think the RX10 Mark IV is your better bet, especially with the clickable aperture ring. The Panasonic though is a great value for the money. You do get a lot of camera under $1,000. So if you're on a budget and price is important, then you may want to consider that as well. It's not an easy decision, but I hope this video helped you come up with whatever decision might be best for you, depending on your own needs. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned, a lot more videos coming up on Super Zooms. Old technology meets new technology, a tech to remember. And I'll see you in the next video. I can't look through both at the same time, so I gotta pick one.